Hey everyone, how's it going? It's Lee Halliday, and um, I was struggling quite a bit this morning trying to figure out um, how use effect works. Uh, specifically, I ran into some issues where um, I was updating state after the component had unmounted and all sorts of issues around async stuff. So I thought I'd do a quick video sort of going over how I ended up with this final version here, and I'll, I'll explain it right now. So first, before I really get into there though, is uh, so this is a small little functional component called fetch, which uh, re receives a URL as its prop. And what I do is I've, I've set up some state to store uh, the fetched result into. Uh, so data here, it starts out as null. You can change it by calling set data. And typically in like old class, uh, old like a week old class style components, this is I'd put in inside of a component did mount where I'd uh, load up the data and set it into the state. But in the new system using use effect, I wanted to try to get it working inside of effect. But um, before I even dive into this, just to keep going. So the first time it renders, um, it actually doesn't run use effect uh, prior to rendering it. It runs it after. So it would almost sort of skip down and come here. And it would say if not data, which uh, is true because data at present time is still null. So if there's no data, return a span that just says loading. Um, then what it would do is it would call the use effect where it would um, make the Axios Ajax call. And when this uh, resolves, so we're awaiting the response, it would update the data and uh, what that would do is trigger another re-render. So it would come down here and finally return um, the data that was uh, resolved from this uh, fake sort of Axios call I'm working with. So I've got a test for it. And what this test does, it's using the React testing library. And uh, if you're more interested in this and how I got here, I've got a previous video, you can check out this. But at the end of the day, I basically use React Testing Library to render out this component. I check that it's loading data correctly. I wait for it to resolve the Axios Ajax call um, using a mocked out version of Axios. And then I just uh, expect uh, and test that things worked as they should have. So if we dive into a little bit more detail here, what's this use effect? It's super long. Um, it's like, what, almost 20 lines long, looks complicated. So let's start right from the beginning and work back to where I got to now. And it will make a lot more sense, I think, if we do that. So to start with, what do you use use effect for? Uh, you use it to basically do any effect that should happen when your data changes. So an effect is basically some external change you want to happen. So that external change could be logging something to the console, could be making uh, HTTP requests, could be updating local storage every time uh, the state changes. So it's sort of anything that isn't directly related to rendering out this uh, this uh, like DOM that you're returning from your function, but has to do with changing something, some effect in another system that you want to change. So. We'll start with using use effect. And what it does is that it receives two um, arguments. So the first one is a function to call. And if I just left it like this, it would basically, so if I do console log, hey, um, it gets called. I don't think this at test will actually pass. And um, that's because I was waiting for uh, I was waiting for an element to appear when the Ajax call resolved. But if I comment out this for now, it ran once, I believe. So just hit W. So I'm going to run um, all tests. So it should spit out uh, console.log. Hey. So if you don't pass any arguments here, what it's going to do is run your effect after uh, every single render. So every time the state changes and it triggers a re-render of this component, it's going to call your effect. Um, 
if you're doing something like an Ajax call and you're changing a bunch of different data attributes, you don't want this thing remaking the Ajax call every single time. So you can pass a second argument here, which it basically uses to determine whether it needs to run your code again. So if you pass an empty array, what this means is it almost mimics the component did mount and component unmount scenario, meaning that it's only going to run this thing one time. So if I save it and the test rerun, um, it still will render hey because uh, it ran it one time and it's fine. But maybe you don't want it running every time and you don't want it running a single time, but you want to run it when some piece of data changes. So maybe some value in your state or some prop that you're receiving uh, from the outside world. So that's what we want to do here in our case. We only want to run the Ajax call when the URL changes. So the use effect uh, hook basically will keep track of this here and it will only rerun your effect when this URL changes. So that's what we got so far. And the, my first attempt at making this code worked, I was like, oh, well, I'll just um, make this an async function so I can uh, await my uh, result from Axios. So I can say equals await um, axios.get the URL. And then once I've gotten the result, I can call set data and pass the result dot data in. So I thought this would be sweet and smart, but uh, it totally failed. And uh, it says, warning, use effect function must return a cleanup function or nothing. Um, so I haven't gotten into this yet, but you can actually return a function that you want to call uh, um, after it has uh, finished uh, unmounting to basically clean up any variables or connections. Say you, uh, you were connected to a socket, you could close the socket at that point. Um, if you were, what are the other scenarios? You had attached an event listener to a DOM element, you could unattach that event listener, or maybe you attached it to the document or, or whatnot. You can unattach it at that point. But um, what's happening here is whenever you make a function async, it basically returns a promise, right? So here, it's expecting that we either return, um, instead you may write an async function separately and then call it inside effect. So what it returned was the promise, but it wants a cleanup function or nothing. Uh, so we need to figure out a better way to do this. So my first idea after that was, well, why don't I just create a little async function out here uh, called load data which is an async function that uh, does this. So now I don't need to make this function async. I can just call load data like that. And I thought it would work, um, but it didn't. And uh, I got a warning. So warning can't perform a React state update on an unmounted component. This is a no-op because it indicates a memory leak in your application. So I'll, I'll try to explain what happened. When I hooked this thing up to my test renderer, it ran through the code, it returned this, and then because it reached the end of the test, um, so it, this passed okay, because um, you can see that my tests are actually passing. It finished the test, and then it called after each cleanup. And what this cleanup function does is it basically unmounts your component. So it unmounted the component, but after the component was unmounted, finally this Axios call resolved. And now I was setting data to update the state of a component that was no longer mounted. So how to solve this? So I searched around the internet and I found um, what seems a little bit clunky, but I haven't been able to figure out a better way yet. So let's take a look at how it might work. The first thing I'm gonna do is move this load data function into my um, function here for use effect. 
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to set a variable called mounted. And we're going to assume it's true at the beginning. So remember that you can return a function from your effect function, which acts as a cleanup function. So that gets called basically um, when the component's going to unmount for you to close up any sockets or, or unattach any event listeners or anything like that. So what we can do is we can return an arrow function that basically sets this mounted variable to false. So on its own, we haven't really done anything yet to improve the situation, but we now have, ver have a variable that tracks whether or not essentially the component is still mounted. So what we can do here then is, well, if we just want to look at some console logs first to see how it's working. So console.log um, mounted, and we'll put the variable here. And we'll put this variable here again. So cool. So the first time it calls our effect, mounted is true. And then it calls our effect again um, a second time. Actually, no, it doesn't call our effect again. This Axios call resolves because it was waiting for it to happen. And at the time it resolves, we can actually see that mounted is now false. So if that's the case, we actually don't want uh, to set the data anymore because um, because there's no component to set the data on. So we can use this variable we set up to, um, so only if mounted are we going to set the data. That. And I can just clean up um, the variables here. So now all of the tests are working and we have no warnings and we're left with this uh, semi-complicated code to basically keep track of whether the component is still mounted at the time that the um, call to Axios is resolved. So just to cover that again, we set up a variable called mounted, which we'll set to true. We'll call our load data, which uh, calls this async function that waits for Axios to resolve. And only if at the time it's resolved, because it's after the await, if it's still mounted, so if that's still true, are we going to set the data? by calling this function here, return from use state. And at the end of this um, use effect function, we are returning a function that's called during the cleanup phase of this component, where we're going to switch this mounted variable back to false, so that if this happens to resolve after it's uh, already been unmounted, this if statement simply won't execute, and we won't update the state on a, an unmounted um, component. I think the only way to improve this still is um, what if we could actually cancel the Ajax call um, before it resolves? Like if we're waiting for a couple hundred milliseconds, the component gets unmounted. Well, at that point, we might not even care about uh, finishing that Ajax call because we're no longer interested in the result. So uh, I haven't dove that far deep. Um, if anyone else has any examples they want to share about that, feel free. But I hope you enjoyed sort of diving into use effect a little bit more to see what causes it to, uh, to be run. Namely, it's this second parameter here. And the three options are empty, meaning every render. Empty array, meaning sort of like component did mount, which is up here, and component did unmount, which would be the function you return at the end. Or you can pass in a variable here so it only runs the effect when the value of this variable changes. Uh, so, hope you enjoyed it. That's it for now. Have a good day.